Hi and welcome to Driver's Seat. It's quite an easy way to make your dull and mundane hatchback a little bit more interesting. Convert it into a hot hatch, think Civic and Civic Type R. But what if the car's already quite interesting? For example, the DS3. Well, DS have brought out a range-topping performance edition. So let's see what they've done to make it a hot hatch. Well, for a start, it gets 18-inch alloy wheels, which really fill these arches. The arches have been extended as well, and there's a wider track. There's some decals on the side and some chrome fittings. Around the back, there's more decals with the performance logo, a couple of badges on the back, 3D lights, and a twin exhaust. Inside, the first thing that greets you are these large performance seats. They're quite clever as well. These sidewalls are soft, so they're not gonna hurt you when you're getting in and out. There's a leather perforated steering wheel, some sports pedals, although they do feel a little bit small and tight together, some carbon fiber effect trim, and a few more performance badges, including the mats. So let's see what it's like to drive. So bury your right foot and this thing takes off. Under the bonnet is a 1.6 litre petrol four-cylinder turbocharged engine that'll develop 207 brake horsepower and 221 pound-feet of torque. Now that'll get this little midget from 0 to 62 miles an hour in 6.5 seconds. And you feel every ounce of power that it's got. It feels really alive. The engine at all times feels flexible. You rarely have to shift up. And in second gear, it'll take you from pull away up to 60 miles an hour shows the range that this engine's got. It's mated to a six-speed manual gearbox. It's got quite a nice throw to it. It's not the shortest. It's not a nice little Ford throw or a Master MX-5. And its performance is varied. Odd number gears are a little bit notchy, whereas it's easier to get into the even number gears. The clutch is well weighted, so your left leg's not gonna get tired from having to use that heavy clutch all day. In dry conditions, it's a whippet. We'll put it on damp, wintry, wet roads, and the front wheels really do struggle to get that power down. Under acceleration, the steering's twitching all over the place, and you're concentrating hard just to go in a straight line. There is a limited slip differential fitted, but it's certainly not eradicating all the problems here. So that wider track is part of a performance suspension upgrade. Smaller undulations on the road are really well dealt with and that's where the, the system works best. If you're hitting a pothole, a speed hump, or even cat size that are not that well fitted, you'll feel it and that really does start to bounce you around too much. But say 90% of the time it's pretty good. Yes, it's firm, but you expect it to be firm. It's a hot hatch, you want it to be firm. And the results through the corners are brilliant. It stays flat, it's true, it's really sweet. Just throw it into the corner, feather the accelerator, and you're off. And that soundtrack is beautiful. It's got tenacious grip turning in, got to be a particularly damp road to get this understeering. That's if you're not accelerating through the corner. Put on probably over 50% acceleration input and it will start to slip and slide with all that power going through the front wheels. But this knits a series of corners together like a swallow diving across a lake in the summer for a drink. To go with that keen grip on turning, the steering is beautifully set up. It's consistent in feel at all times. It's darty, it just reacts to every every small input that you put in. It'll make mid-corner adjustments with no problem. It just feels really well connected. These performance seats really keep you in place. They feel quite intimate. It feels like I'm spooning and I'm the little spoon. I'm really well held into position and I'm comfortable. They've got a pump lever to adjust height and a lever to adjust the backrests. Also, they form the access route to the rear seats. Gives you plenty of headroom. This is in the lowest setting, but I've had it higher and it's 
still good headroom in here. The steering wheel has decent adjustment on reach and rake. And you can get really comfortable in here. The, the dashboard's pushed back, so it gives you a feel of space and room. Although there's not too much storage. There's a little bit in the door, there's a little bit between the seats, and there's a half a glove box. But what is obvious is there's only one cup holder and there's nowhere that's got covered storage so you're using the glove box probably more than you would in most cars. Story's not quite as good in the back. There's very little leg and knee room. At five foot nine with my seat position like that as a driver, I struggle to get into the back at all. The boot's pretty decent, it's a bit back to basics. There's no frills or spills in there and that's just fine with me. It's, it's deep, it's rectangular and it's got a flat floor. It's quite a high load lip, so if you are loading heavier items, that's a bit annoying, but it's not bad at all. DS3 Performance was introduced after the Citroen badge was dropped from the DS line, so rather than it being the Citroen DS3, it's now just the DS3. With that, there was a minor facelift. New technology brought into this as 7 inch touchscreen with sat nav and Apple CarPlay. It's pretty decent to use. There's a button lower down that's your main menu button, and then you reach up to use the touchscreen. It's the only oddity, but other than that, it's a decent system. You also get automatic air conditioning in this model. Off the shelf, the performance cost £21,415. This one, however, has got a couple of bits of kit on it, so you've got a hi-fi system, which is pretty decent and goes quite loud, and the GT Pack, which gives you front and rear parking sensors and city brake assist, and that's pushing this to 22900 And that's quite a lot to ask for this little car, but this isn't a sheep in wolf's clothing. They've properly engineered it. They've put time and effort and money into making this more than a DS3. This is a quality little thing and while a Ford Fiesta ST200 will tick a lot of people's boxes, this can't be ruled out. It's a lot of fun, it's entertaining, it's got a great soundtrack and it looks phenomenal. Well, what can you say about the DS3 performance? Other than that torque steer, this is a fun, lively, cracking little Super Mini. And if you're after one, I doubt you'd be sorry when it looks that good. Thanks for watching Driver's Seat. Remember to subscribe to the channel and let us know in the comments section below what you think about the DS3 performance.